Uh, okay, uh, so I guess we can start. Um, I'm going to start in English and then um, I'm going to switch uh, to Croatian in, uh, in a few seconds. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Sebastian. Nice to see you uh, again. Um, dobro jutro, dobar dan svima. Uh, vidim da nas ima uh, oko 50, ako se neko u buduće... Uh, 50, almost, and uh, uh, I hope that everyone that will join us later uh, will catch uh, up. So, welcome uh, to the initiative uh, Making Cities Resilient 2023. My name is Natasha Holzinger and I'm working at the Civil uh, Protection from the Ministry of Interior in Croatia. And I'm very glad to uh, talk to the local level and to discuss uh, lowering the catastrophe risk and disaster risk. And I hope that we will have even more uh, talks and discussions like this one. Uh, you have received the agenda, I hope so. You know uh, uh, that after the introductory talks, uh, our colleagues will talk about the initiative and then we will see the experience from the city of Zagreb and the Dubrovnik Nereva County that uh, have joined this uh, session and uh, decided to share their experience through their short um, relation and presentation. Uh, there will be also a lot of space for questions and answers, and uh, we'll discuss it later. Uh, the uh, Office for um, Risk, uh, uh, UNDRR, have uh, uh, provided a simultaneous interpretation, so you can use the Zoom application interpreting function. You can just click on the globe. Uh, perhaps you will see it in Croatian or in English interpretation, and you can use the interpretation feature in English or in Croatian language. I suggest that uh, we should start with the introductory um, speeches, so I would like to uh, have Mr. Darko Majstorovic from the uh, Civil Protection Ministry of Interior. Naime,
Вера его я не сразу Sources to re reduce the risks. We have to think globally but act locally. Uh, hvala, hvala gospodine Majstorović. Uh, malo nam je mikrofon prekidao, uh, pa, ću ja, pa ću ja ukratko uh, sumirati the, za uh, naše kolege. Like sum up for our colleagues from the UN and for all the listeners who, were, who haven't heard part of this uh, conversation. It's very important for us to include the local community into this initiative and to reduce the risk of disasters in general. And we would like to invite everyone to join in order to reduce the most possible the risks because we see that the risks are uh, more and are becoming uh, more frequent and more intensive. So Mr. Maistorovic greets, greets you all and he wishes us a successful webinar. I would like to invite Mr. Sebastian Benzini, the manager of the U and uh, Nations, uh, United Nations Office for Disasters Risk Reduction of Rueca to greet us and to tell, to tell us a few words. So the floor is yours, Sebastian. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Orsinger, and indeed, I will just limit myself to, to greet you. I think my, my colleague Andrew Bauer is really far more important than me today in this meeting. So uh, very quickly, I just would like to say that our entire office is extremely pleased to uh, be part of this initiative as we are a long term and a key partner of Croatia for a long period of time, and we have a very fruitful relation with the Sendai Framework Focal Point, yourself, uh, Natasha, and uh, your team as well. We are also very pleased because this workshop is a tangible result of discussions which initiated already last year and to some extent even before, and we are very pleased to see Zagreb and the county of Dubrovnik joining the large network of the MCR 2030 cities in Europe and Central Asia. Cities, I don't need to tell you anymore, are definitely on the front line of disasters and extreme weather events. And in our region, we have witnessed again a dramatic summer in Europe where cities had to face record temperatures, longer heat waves and even wildfires as in Italy, as in Greece, just to name a, a few of it. So in this context, as Mr. Masterovich just said, building resilience and adapting is just fundamental. What I would like to say is Croatia is already an active country on this front and Croatian cities have already initiated work in this direction, obviously. However, in taking part of the MCR 2030 initiative, Zagreb and the county of Dubrovnik will scale up this effort in joining 178 cities in Europe and more than 1,600 globally. And with this, the MCR 2030 initiative is not just a question of membership. This network facilitates experience sharing capacity building and joint efforts for accelerating adaptation and the implementation of the Sendai framework. In Europe, we have already experimented on-site peer exchanges among cities, action-oriented dialogues and capacity building webinars, which provide cities like from now Zagreb and cities from the county of Dubrovnik with concrete solutions. The MCR 2030, as Mr. Bauer will explain in a moment, also offers very specific tools for assessing risk and resilience and for initiating strategic planning for disaster risk reduction. 
these strategic documents are at the core of the Sendai framework priorities. Therefore, we already invite you to the next milestone of this work, which will take place online on the 3rd October and will focus on heat waves. Andrew will uh, give you more details about that. The adhesion of Croatian cities comes also at a very timely moment, few months after the midterm review of the Sendai framework, where member states to further support local authorities and to better articulate between the national and the local levels. We hope that together we will continue to push this specific agenda and to find specific solutions for increasing funding and investments for municipalities especially. In this regard, the MCR 2030 initiative also partners with a large range of organizations and networks dedicated to climate action and disaster risk reduction at local level. We are convinced that this catalytic effect will support your efforts. We are going to remain fully engaged with the national authorities, with the Sendai Framework National Focal Point, with our team, for scaling this effort to the local level and for supporting you. And we have no doubt about the success of this new work stream to take place in Croatia. If we wish to achieve the targets of the Sendai framework and the sustainable development goals by 2030, this action that we are initiating is going to be critical. So therefore, we will make all efforts to support you through this MCR initiative and to rapidly also extend it to a larger number of Croatian cities engaged in resilience building. I thank you very much again for this invitation, for this opening remarks, and I really wish you a very fruitful discussion on the substance and for building resilience together. Thank you very much, Natasha. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, uh, very nice words, and I hope we can get, uh, as a first step, uh, a lot of our uh, participants here. We have uh, 57, as I can see now, to join on, on October 3rd uh, and, and uh, see about heat waves. Um, I propose, um, predlažem, pardon, <laughs> da sad, uh, pred... I suggest that we uh, hear something about the initiative by Mr. Andrew Bauer representative of the uh, UNDRR officer who will talk to us about the uh, initiatives and then we will hear the experiences from our cities. Thank you very much, Natasha. I'm delighted to be here with you this morning and thank you again uh, to uh, the uh, opening remarks and colleagues uh, who have framed ideally the discussion. Um, I will share a, a few elements of detail and information about the work that we do with cities uh, that uh, Sebastian, uh, Mr. Penzini has mentioned already, but we will go into a little bit more detail to explain what you may expect from this network, what we would hope to get from you in terms of your involvement as cities. And as Sebastian said, we hope to see as many cities from Croatia join this initiative, and we're delighted to be working with uh, the team around the Sendai Focal Point at a national level to really create a positive momentum in that direction. I'll share a few slides. Um, I hope I'm not going to create too much trouble. Um, let's see, let me see this, perfect. And I'm now going into full slide mode. Can you see my slides, Natasha? Do you see the, the main slide, the first slide? I can see it, yes. Do you not see the notes, right? You see just the slide. Perfect, perfect. No. Then, oh, sorry, sorry. No, we can see the notes. So ah, no, okay, okay. The there's, notes, always yeah. this, uh, there's always this, I've got two screens, so I need to always Think, change things ah, around. There better, you go. Right? Yeah. Super. We can see Fantastic. on the slide now. Yeah. Super. Thank you very much. So um, very quickly, 
I just wanted to leave you with two thoughts, which are critical, I think, to uh, the reflections we have here, to the relevance of the network and the relevance of your activities as cities, as counties, working on urban and local resilience. You see from the graph that the line is and the trend is increasing in terms of number of disaster events that we are witnessing worldwide. And this trend is not set to stop. So engaging on urban resilience, engaging on disaster risk reduction is more critical than ever. And we've heard that already today. The second element on the slide is the notion that cities are complex environments. We talk about cities as a system of different systems, different components of a city, whichever the size of the city, make it a particularly complicated environment to engage. And when we come to reducing disaster risk and mitigating the impact of disasters, we need to understand and address those connections and overlaps and functionings between these different systems. In terms of the global process that accompanies this whole exercise, there is the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. You may not necessarily be familiar with the details, and we are, of course, happy to share more information. Natasha is, of course, an expert in this sector, too. Uh, but I think here the idea is to look at what are some of the priorities that are driving the DRR, the Disaster Risk Reduction Agenda, at a global level. And across those elements, the local level is important and central to each one of those. Whether we are talking about understanding disaster risk, risk governance, the investments in disasters, disaster risk management, as well as preparedness measures and build back better. But coming back to making cities resilient and MCR 2030, we are really structuring this initiative around three stages, three blocks. The first part uh, is to really work with cities that may not have engaged on disaster resilience so far and really working on improving the knowledge, getting better knowledge around disaster risk. Cities are then moving on to the process of planning for disaster risk reduction and resilience, looking at how to strengthen capacities across different aspects of the work, of the frameworks in place, and finally, moving on to the implementation of that work. How do we finance the activities? How can we develop projects that support resilience building, climate adaptation, or other forms of risk reduction measures? These are the three main pillars of this initiative, which we would really like you to have in mind as accompanying the process. But first, I want to also flag and mention that making cities resilient is not just a UN DRR activity. It is a collaborative effort with a number of different partners from across the region. There are also some global partners, but you see here in Europe and Central Asia, we work with a number of different partners who are also involved and committed to supporting the city's member of this network. Some very familiar names to you here will probably be the Disaster Preparedness and Prevention Initiative for Southeastern Europe, for example, the European Committee of the Regions, amongst others. The idea here is to really establish a network of partners who have different networks, different initiative, different instruments, and different expertise to provide, and making cities resilient somehow brings these elements together so that um, we try and make the most of the different elements that are available to you. From the UNDRR perspective, there is one component that we've been working on, uh, which uh, again, here is presented in uh, the uh, context of what we do on the scorecard for disaster risk reduction. It is available online in a number of, of different uh, languages. And uh, I have a hyperlink in this slide, which will show you 
to a version and a number of versions that you can access online. And UNDRR will remain happy to follow and support your efforts in running these exercises if you need that type of engagement. The idea here is to organize a resilience assessment, a resilience assessment that will help define the baseline, the basis of understanding of what are the priorities, what are the measures needed for disaster risk reduction across 10 different principles. We have some material already available in a number of localized language to the Western Balkans, unfortunately not in Croatian, but here in Serbian. But of course, we can then also discuss and work with the colleagues to see if we can make that information fine-tuned to your local context. There are a number of thematic scorecards that can be used that look at different sectors and different themes of relevance. And these are also available online. All of them are available in English, but you can consult them online. Some are still being developed, such as displacement and climate change scorecards, but the rest can be consulted online. And we'd be very happy to provide you with more information on these. But these slides will be shared afterwards, so you can consult the link here to the online information. I'm giving you here a snapshot of a few experiences we've had in this sector which has really proven to be very useful. Um, on the top, and this is a very quite emotional one, this is the context of Mariupol with whom we did some work in 2020, uh, prior to the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, where we did a resilience assessment then. Unfortunately, this has gone a little bit for the moment on standby, but also an experience here, a picture of the work we have done in similar context in Kyrgyzstan where colleagues get together to carry out these scorecard assessments. So really emphasizing this notion of collaborative approach in running these assessments. Another key component of the initiative, which um, Sebastian has mentioned already, is this notion of resilience building through sharing of experiences, through peer learning between different cities, different partners. Um, we have in the network, 25 resilience hubs in the world. 11 of those are located in Europe and they are committed to support the peer learning and the exchange of experiences with cities in the network. So if you join and when you join, we hope you can make the most of those capacities and engage with hubs, with other cities in the network. The idea is to create an environment where you can engage with different practitioners and increase the value of that network. It is a way of also identifying different options for technical assistance and of course, ways of twinning with other cities. You may be involved in twinning projects on other sectors in other areas of work. And uh, one could explore the possibilities of looking at that type of experience in the context of disaster resilience. The network of MCR 2030 is there for that. So we hope we can really maximize that opportunity with you. Again, sharing a couple of experiences where this work has already been done and proven very useful and uh, positive. We uh, have done a number of these peer learning opportunities with some of the hubs you see here, the hub of the city of Potenza or the province of Potenza in Italy, welcoming cities from across Bosnia, Herzegovina and Serbia uh, earlier this year and colleagues uh, from Dushanbe and the city uh, of Astana uh, visiting Greater Manchester to find out more about how they function at a local level in terms of disaster risk resilience. Just to conclude and to wrap up everything I just shared with you, there is a bit of a natural process of how you could use MCR 2030 for your benefit and to really maximize your engagement. We would like, first of all, to see you join the initiative. It's free, it's easy to carry out, and we can support you get there. The idea is afterwards to have a good understanding of what your resilience needs are at a local level, and the UNDRR scorecard, which I mentioned, could be very useful in that regard. The online network will have information on the different tools and contacts that you can connect with. And of course, as I mentioned, we have these resilience hubs that oversee a lot of the support work to cities 
and we could work and uh, uh, along with different Croatian cities in the network to identify what those needs could be and make the right connections with the resilience hubs in the network. Of course, there is also the number of core partners I mentioned already, which we can involve in the process. And finally, going towards implementation and how can we then work on project preparation and the development and steer of the different strategies you have in place at a local level for reducing disaster risk. As Sebastian said, the, la the next big milestone where you can benefit from a number of in expertise and contacts uh, uh, through the network will be on the 3rd of October, a uh, global webinar we will be hosting uh, on the issues of wildfire and urban heat risk. Um, we will share through Natasha and colleagues the link to that. You can register online. It will be uh, in English, um, but it will have a, a, a vast amount of information shared. And we hope that we can then engage Croatian cities in similar types of activities in the future. I just want to thank you for your attention. Um, I will hand the floor back over to our chair um, and just leave you with the reflection that indeed we need to continue and work more together as the disasters themselves are not waiting for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, love the last slide. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, uh, do we have uh, already some questions uh, for Andrew before we continue with, uh, with the experience sharing from the city of Zagreb? Um, so if you have any questions, please ask in the Q&A. As far as I can see, there are no questions at the moment. Uh, okay. Thank okay, you. Andrew, can, Andrew, you I, there is a question. Yeah. I can see the question, Natasha. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. So I can give you an example of a. Uh, I, yeah, you see me now. I've stopped sharing, I guess. Yeah. So um, an example of a city that has joined and has really benefited from the results. One example, and I can go back to uh, one of the slides uh, we just showed here, which is the involvement, for example, with the capital city of Kazakhstan that has joined this network with us uh, 18 months ago. And um, by establishing a whole structure at a local level to work on disaster resilience, it has allowed the possibility of engaging Astana actively in different elements of support. For example, first of all, doing a resilience assessment with them to help the municipality understand what are the disaster resilience priorities and gaps and challenges they face. The city has organized uh, uh, proactively the creation of a working group within the municipality involving different sectors of the municipality to work around a focal point um, using the MCR 2030 momentum to benefit from that type uh, to engage and reflect on how to put these elements together. The city is now working on the development of its local disaster risk reduction strategy and is also getting involved in a set of other areas of work. For example, we have been discussing with them and hearing from them an interest to work on how do they address the issue of persons with disabilities and disaster risk reduction. So they are interested in working on a specific thematic focus and are trying to see how they can benefit from the expertise in the network and how we can connect them with other cities and partners that can help uh, in that direction. And as I showed you in some one of the photos, they have prior to this uh, specific thematic exercise worked uh, with one of the resilience hubs to really understand better how and where they should go to establish their local disaster risk reduction strategy. So really, it has created an opportunity for that city to develop a whole agenda around disaster risk reduction and resilience yeah establish a governance at a local level to work more on resilience and expose the city to a number of other cities and partners with whom they are exchanging and are, have had the opportunity to take part in different workshops and seminars that have helped the teams at a local level to build their capacities and awareness of the topic to better support the process. So this is one example amongst many that I think is illustrates well 
the real value of engaging and uh, we would be delighted to try and establish those types of contacts with the cities in Croatia who wish to join this network. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, uh, um, th this, is, this is very interesting to hear and only from a city that joined only 18 months ago. Uh, uh, that's uh, great progress. So from, from what, I, what I can gather is if the cities are active and start engaging a little bit, they get a lot more back from the initiative uh, uh, and a lot more opportunities in connecting and, and learning from each other. We have something in Croatia, uh, uh, well, I don't, I don't know the official name of it, but cities that are friends with other cities uh, uh, in, in Europe and, and outside. Uh, but this seems a lot more active and, and uh, with a lot more uh, active uh, involvement from, from their peers uh, and, and actual activities to, to learn from. So uh, a great example. Uh, I hope we have Croatian cities uh, examples like that uh, uh, very soon. Uh, okay, if we don't have any more questions, I propose um, we go on uh, with our agenda. Um, so next on the agenda is the representative from the city of Zagreb, Kristina Martinovic, who will present our experiences from the city of Zagreb, both in joining and in reducing uh, disaster uh, risks. Uh, so, Christina, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. The city of Zagreb joined uh, shortly before the summer to the initiative, and we were part of the first initiative uh, that was in uh, 2012, 2013, I'm not sure. Yes, it was until uh, 2019. Exactly, yes, we were the first city that joined and we received the badge and it was very good for us at the very beginning, but then we stopped being active in that initiative. Uh, we lost uh, the pace and now when there was the new one, we immediately decided to join the initiative. We like the fact that in the meanwhile, uh, the tools have been developed that allow the cities to develop and to uh, exchange experiences within the initiative. And I hope that we will be able to use those tools for certain projects and for exchange of experiences, knowledge, and not to leave it only as an initiative. So I wanted to seize this opportunity and uh, just to present briefly two projects that we are dealing with currently and that would enter the domain of prevention, meaning what uh, Andrew said, so no better. No, get to know better your problems in order to plan better and to be able to be more successful during the implementation phase. So I prepared this presentation because it's easier for me to speak like that. So I will share my presentation. So I think that I need some kind of um, permission to share my, I think it is allowed, it is permitted for you if you use the link that you received from Andrew yesterday. It says share screen in the middle. It says host disabled participants from sharing screen. So if you can give me the permission. Now, has it changed? I have made you co-host, so in principle, you should have the share screen button at the bottom. I had the share screen button, yes, but I couldn't. Oh, the, there is a question who you can see share my screen and now? Uh, I just changed it to host and panelists. So I, it okay. okay. Yeah. You, share, you can see my screen now. Yes. Uh, yes, but you should start the presentation. Uh, of this course. Way. Yeah, yeah, thank you. From beginning. Is it okay now? Can you see it? Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Dakle, uh, uh, 
Ispričat ću kratko o dvije velike stvari koje radimo. Prvo je... So, I will tell you briefly about two things that we do. First of all, is the urban safety in the city of Zagreb. And the second is the project about the uh, earthquake risks in the Zagreb. And the urban safety and the strate strategy and the project are now in the final phase. So the city of Zagreb is currently adopting the strategy of internal safety and we had a meeting with Natasha and we talked about the modalities, how this uh, strategy could uh, follow the documentation of uh, UNDRR and where it could uh, merge in. And I believe that uh, all of you who live in cities, uh, you do realize in what kind of conditions we live and which, uh, what are the problems for us that we have to deal with. So urban safety is one of the main areas of uh, action of the cities with the objective to ensure all the necessary conditions for a safe life and balanced development and the construction of resilience uh, for the modern risks. We think that uh, urban safety is the need and responsibility of all the persons, uh, regardless of their education or anything else. So uh, the city of Zagreb uh, has been adopting this for a year and now it's finalizing this document that we believe will be the base for the development of uh, many measures and also for the cooperation with other cities. The objective of our strategy, as I said, is to improve the cooperation, coordination and participation of all the stakeholders in prevention of urban safety risks, but also to create resilience uh, for certain risks basic principles that we are building our strategy on is multi-sector cooperation and multidisciplinary understanding of risks. So the city of Zagreb has created a proposal of strategy which was very of a very good quality but we didn't adopt uh, this because there was the change of authority of government but now when we started with creating new strategy we saw that we had some new risks for example the energy risks and therefore in this new strategy that we are creating certain areas that we are dealing with have changed. How are we working? So we have a working group, a professional working group that develops certain areas of urban safety. Uh, members of the working groups are generally uh, from the professional and scientific community. We are also include other professionals according to necessary needs. We believe that we will be including also the citizens in a wider public discussion that is planned uh, towards the end and so when we will have everything finalized in order to publish it. Then we will also determine the measures and activities and then when we do it, we will also develop concrete projects that we will certainly look for partners also through this platform for their implementation. So these are our areas. So the protection of health and environment, uh, protection of uh, natural and technological catastrophes, strengthening of social cohesion, solidarity and inclusiveness. I think that this is an area, this is one of the most challenging ones. For example, here in the city of Zagreb, we started to accept and we are developing the labor market uh, with uh, foreign uh, workers, so there will be a lot of uh, a lot of uh, challenges. Then cyber safety, energy safety, uh, then uh, energy and the uh, usage of renewable energy sources. Uh, then, as I said, this is a new chapter for us. 
So especially after the beginning of the war in Ukraine and everything that happened last year, we know that uh, energy uh, sources that we consider that will be always available to us. Now we see that we need to reformulate that part and we have to see how the cities can or in this case, the city of Zagreb, how can it overcome this uh, energy crisis? As I said, this is a new area for us. So then we have a safety, uh, safe and available public places and the prevention of crime. Then the safety of transportation and public transportation and terrorism and the rising radicalization. So these are the areas that we are dealing with in our strategy. And each from of that areas, once we define it, will bring, we, we will adopt other, also certain measures that will be used for creating projects. We had a conference uh, where we discussed with the professional public and we had eight pearl panel discussions and these are the results of those panels so each area for each area we had one panel we had a very very good discussion uh, and very good contributions but this is uh, the summary and uh, the results that we obtained at the moment, so uh, maybe I don't have to read everything out, but maybe the second chapter that will connect to uh, my uh, lecture is the protection of uh, natural and technological disasters. So, uh, the city of Zagreb has a very high risk of earthquakes, and we had recently an earthquake. And what uh, was very clear, clear in this panel is that we lack institutional uh, memory what is that so we need to when when you live something out and know that all the institutions uh, that participated should develop a mechanism in order to answer better in the future so we had an earthquake we did everything that we had to do but we didn't at least not consciously adopt any new documents and we didn't adopt any new strategies for that risk and we believe that this is something that we are lacking here we have other areas so maybe i don't have to go into each one of them And this is, as far as the strategy is considered, we will have the text ready by the end of this year, and I'm sure that we will initiate the public discussion until the end of this year. And uh, then, depending on the measures that will be adopted, we will develop projects and strategies of urban safety. The second part of my uh, presentation will be dealing with the uh, earthquake risk in the city of Zagreb. So this is one of the problems in the Republic of Croatia. Zagreb is the capital. It has the majority of the uh, population in Zagreb, and this is very devastating for our city. These are certain snapshots for you who haven't seen the consequences of the earthquake from 2020 in Zagreb. So the first weekend of total lockdown in Zagreb, we had an earthquake 5.5 Richter. This is not the strongest earthquake that threatens the city of Zagreb, but as you can see by the photos, we can see that it was quite devastating and uh, dangerous. We always uh, say that it's very good and very bad to have an earthquake in the mid of the lockdown. The good thing was that people were in the house, in their houses and the cities were empty. You can see the situation on the roads and if people were outside, there will be for sure dead people. But fortunately uh, and unfortunately, there was the lockdown and the people were closed in their homes. So 
uh, Zaya was completely alone in uh, solving all the consequences uh, and um, it wasn't allowed to travel from other cities to Zaya. Uh, we had also the damage of the sacral object. This is the cathedral and you can see here what happened and this is the interior of the cathedral. We had about 50,000 reports about damages in the so 50,000 uh, reportings, but there was somewhat double and triple. So when we cleared it up, uh, we reached this figure of 25,580 examinations. So the red buildings, the, the most severe ones, were 1,167. I must say that all this methodology for the examination of the buildings uh, that uh, we use later also in examining the buildings in Petrinya, we developed it in our office and we developed it uh, through years together with the faculty of construction in Zagreb. And then when the earthquake occurred, we already had a methodology that we could apply to the first inspections and we could start with the first inspections of building. So we had 1,167 red buildings that were not a use in a usable state and 180 were also marked red, but not because they were damaged, but because there was a threat from outside, either a chimney or a part of a building or something else that were threatening this house. Uh, uh, Orange houses were the most. There was a lot of them. Green was the highest number. But the second day of inspection, we introduced this category of green buildings that uh, are usable, but with recommendations on usages, but because we found out that we lack this uh, green B uh, tag that would instruct the owners uh, that, that would say that you can stay in your house, but if you do this and that. So we filled in this methodology. As I said, earthquake risk for the city of Zagreb is a strategic project. 85% has been financed by uh, the EU funds, and it is a strategic project for the Republic of Croatia because in the assessment of risk for the Republic of Croatia, the earthquake risk in uh, the city of Zagreb is one of them, is, is taken as the main risk. And we have done this assessment based on that, uh, on that risk. I will skip this part because this is part of a larger project and just not to go too much into this. So we received, and this is a project, a three-year project, and the total amount is about 31 million kunas, and we will uh, use most of it. There will be just a little bit of uh, funds that we want to use. Why are we doing this project? First of all, we have an objective to create a methodology for the assessment of risk that will be applied to all of the cities in Croatia that are threatened by uh, uh, by um, earthquakes, then we have to define the danger of earthquakes and we want to define the risk of earthquakes for the buildings and people. Besides that, we want to, so to create our database uh, of uh, structures and the citizens, the, pop the population, and what we miss are the databases. So something that we could build up on. And of course, we want to calculate the risk uh, for the city of Zagreb, but we also want to transfer the knowledge on earthquake risks. We also have special objectives. So when we are creating a database, and you will see later what it looks like, it's a very thorough and we want uh, for all of our emergency services to use them. Also, the civil uh, 
because this can be used for, for any for many other risks, but also for their everyday work. So if you have a building that has been assessed so well, if you know that uh, there is a structure that inside that's, that is made in wood, if it has uh, a, a roof uh, and uh, if there are any kind of fire exits, then the fireman who comes there he already has the data about that building before he reaches it and he knows how to act so the idea is that this database is live and that we can use it every day and not only for the assessment of earthquake risk and of course afterwards we will be able to work on it even more and to uh, and to add even more data so these are the elements of our project I will skip them now. So after the earthquake in Zagreb, this is what it looked uh, like. So we had these points and then this is what uh, our 3D model looks like. So we exactly know exactly where which are the red, orange and green buildings. In Zagreb, we have very many a, a large number of uh, constructions in Zagreb, 325,010, and we plan to assess all of them. Of course, the longest part and the largest part of this entire project is uh, the collection of data on the constructions and the buildings. And of course, it takes most of the time in order to collect this easily we created uh, two basic applications one is for the construction engineers and the other one is for the citizens so the data that we collect on the buildings are different uh, various and this has been taken out from the application for the citizens so we created this app where you can uh, very easily uh, include your building and then our engineers can, can have a look at it. So these are some of the main elements of the earthquake risk. So for example, the construction year, reconstruction year, number of uh, number of floors above and below uh, the level, uh, then the shape of the roof, um, the material of construction, uh, thickness of walls and so on and so on. We also created many different dashboards to be able to monitor in a better way also the ongoing situation of the project. So this is one of our dashboards. So you can see what it looks like. Um, yesterday I downloaded this. Uh, so we completed completely the inspection of 201,000 buildings in uh, Zagreb. Currently, we have got 55,000 uh, that have to be inspected and they are 48,000 are currently elaborated and they will also go to the first column. So we know in every uh, neighborhood how many buildings uh, are elaborated and uh, we will present the risks for each neighborhood and for each uh, council of the local uh, citizens. So this is our database. It's always available to us, but now just not to uh, take more time. Maybe I can show it later, uh, so I won't connect now. So it will, I will show you what it looks like. So thank you very much. This is what I wanted to say, but uh, another thing that uh, always uh, people ask me, if I had this kind of uh, database before the earthquake, I must say that must, many, many things would be easier. All of those assessments would be done more quickly way more uh, swiftly because we would have all the data without us going out and assessing. We would know which buildings are resilient, which are not, and all this procedure would have been a lot easier. Our emergency services would have had a way easier time uh, in, for their actions and they would know what they can ex expect 
in the field and what they have to look out for and how to solve certain situations. But what currently is happening in the assessment of earthquake risk in the world is that if there are certain uh, databases that are complete and relevant, the assessments of earthquake cannot don't have to be done, uh, but they can be followed from any other city uh, by engineers who know how to apply this world methodology uh, that we are now adopting. So if we had this database before the earthquake in Zaga, our Professor Atalich wouldn't uh, have to have many sleepless nights and people, colleagues from all around the world would have helped him because they would know the risks and the situation of buildings uh, based on this database. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. I see that there is a question. Uh, should I stop uh, with this presentation? Yes, uh, you can stop your presentation and we can answer to the first question maybe one or two questions and then um, after the presentation of the city of Dubrovnik we can answer to other questions so now we have the question how do you plan to create the database on the uh, population given the GDPR we do it according to the circles uh, uh, so we don't do it um, but you, we don't do it name by name, but we do it generally for each neighborhood. Thank you. I see that there is also a question from Andrew. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christina. This is extremely interesting and uh, it demonstrates a, the whole relevance for having Zagreb member of this network. Uh, I, it, there's a lot there for us to learn and I think there's a lot for other cities to hear more about the establishment of that database and how you use it. My question is, are you already engaging with other cities either in Croatia or internationally about earthquake risk management uh, or could we work together to use the MCR 2030 network to establish those types of contacts? So. Um, Yes, that would be uh, my question uh, for the time being. Thank you again. It was very interesting. My answer, Andrew, is yes and no. We are you know, talking with other cities, but uh, we don't have any uh, a specific project with other cities. So we are willing uh, to work with you and with other cities to a, a specific project. Our goal for this year is just to end this project. That's why we didn't you know, search for new partners because we have a lot of things uh, to do till the end of the year. But um, of course we are willing, we, we, I think that we have a lot of things to talk about uh, with other cities. Okay, hvala Kristina. Thank you, Andrew. I see uh, vidim da imamo još uh, jedno pitanje od uh, I see we have another question uh, from our participants. Uh, uh, I don't know if it, this is a hand choice. Uh, you may ask a question if you want. You should unmute your mic. Okay, in case that the hand has been advised uh, by accident, we could continue with our agenda and then uh, um, come back later to this question if it's uh, if it will be necessary. Thank you, Christina, for your fantastic presentation. A great mix of uh, risk management and strategic planning and collaboration with institution, local communities before the catastrophe, before the disaster, and using these connections uh, in uh, disaster response. So that's something that we have always been emphasizing that is very useful and necessary. and. Uh, um, 
academic academia is not used only where uh, we do the risk assessment but and reducing the risks but we have to use them especially in these cases in all cases of recovery in all the procedures need is needed uh, because they have uh, a lot of ideas that are useful in all these phases i suggest that we could continue with our uh, presentation uh, from uh, Difference of different experiences. I uh, invite Mr. Mato Tomljanovic from Dubrovnik and Neretva County to present to to present uh, their experiences. Mato, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning to everyone. I'm really happy to present the experience of uh, our county and our initiatives and all the activities that we perform in our county in order to make our region uh, more resilient and to uh, spur uh, local municipalities to follow our steps. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Martinovic for her great uh, presentation. There are a lot of elements uh, that also the counties uh, could use uh, and it is very useful to hear so much details about this topic. My idea is to uh, present what the Dubrovnik Neretva County is doing in order to obtain uh, objectives uh, of this initiative. Uh, we have joined in August of this year, it was rather late, but within the activities that we have been implementing, I hope that we will uh, manage to to use this initiative and to do a lot of things. Uh, I will use the PowerPoint presentation uh, to, to show you what we are doing. And see what are the expectations are from uh, being part of this initiative. Can you see the presentation? Uh, perhaps you could start the presentation and see it full screen. Uh, you already know, but, uh, but uh, I need to start with the geographical position of Dubrovnik Neretva County. The, here are all the data uh, presented. I won't uh, read them through. Uh, it is very important that our uh, county is connected with the Pelješac bridge, and we have uh, a lot of uh, water surface and um, that uh, surface we have uh, 116,000 uh, inhabitants gravitating towards Dubrovnik because of the tourism development and uh, what tourism offers for uh, life quality. Uh, taking into account our geographical position, uh, we see how uh, little is the space available to us. We, we have different uh, disasters, extreme ter temperatures, earthquake, uh, floods, uh, epidemics, uh, and other hazards that uh, would uh, occur on our territory, which is a uh, and it's for a river which is very close to us and it's delta so it's a, a very critical uh, area an area very uh, well known for agriculture and uh, uh, we're still seeing the first slide so Ms. Uh, Holzinger is just uh, informing Mr. Tomljanovic to adjust the slides
ako imate više ekrana, pokušajte zamijeniti ekrane. Evo, sad, sad vidimo PowerPoint, samo bi trebalo početi prezentaciju. Jel se vidi sada? Ne, još uvijek vidimo PowerPoint, ne vidimo prezentaciju, nije počela. Ako imate dva ekrana, pokušajte ih zamijeniti. Nemam, nemam. A nemate? Nemam, okay. nemam. A pokušat ćemo još jednu, vidjet ćemo što možemo napraviti. We will try to adjust this technical equipment just once again in order to make the presentation visible. Kako je situacija sada? Još uvijek vidimo PowerPoint prezentaciju, ali predlažim da, da, vi, da vi samo sa strane na slajdovima mijenjate onda svaki slajd pa da ih gledamo ovako. Ili sad što bolje ili još... Sad vidimo vas... treći slajd, ali vidimo cijeli PowerPoint. Znači vidimo samo taj slajd, nego vidimo i sve ostale. Ali morate nam mijenjati onda svaki slajd, predlažim. Dobro, evo, došli smo do ovoga dijela, vidite ga vaj okay. Um, we have reached this third slide with the experiences from MCR 2030. We have no uh, critical experience because we have joined recently. We have five cities, 17 municipalities. Uh, it is a total of 22 units of local uh, administration on the, on the uh, right side. There are the strategic uh, objectives and Uh, what is the uh, Dubrovnik Neretva county doing? Uh, at the local level, uh, we have the understanding of the risk, uh, um, capacity enforcement and uh, support to local um, administration units. What we have been doing at the county is the um, participation and realization of different European projects uh, from the um, area of civil protection, linking between the uh, local administration units and uh, uh, strengthening all the border, border areas. We also work with uh, schools uh, and uh, raising the awareness of um, children of the school age. What is uh, very specific uh, uh, in our county, we are uh, not uh, a city, we are a county, and what is good is that uh, we are able to uh, make possible certain activities on areas that are not well developed, uh, for example, in a, certain municipalities on our territories in, May, in order to make it more resilient to disasters. We have been uh, collaborating and partners in different uh, projects of territorial cooperation. We have been uh, in Ipatriatic. It is a cross-border uh, program when Croatia was not part of the Euro European Union. Now we have Interreg Italy-Croatia, which is a really important program for us. And then we have Interreg uh, Ipac-Croatia, uh, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Montenegro. The objectives that uh, we want to obtain are the uh, strengthening of capacities of local administration units, um, equal development of civil protection and risk response, exchange of experiences. Uh, this is our role because our main objective is to link all the uh, local administration units with national bodies and agencies responsible for civil protection. Uh, in order to illustrate what we have um, implemented till now, 
we have uh, some projects here presented. Uh, IPA Adriatic project uh, from the pre-accession phase. It is very important because uh, the, we started the modernization of uh, our operative units. Uh, that was first on our list, uh, which is surveillance of open spaces uh, using the video surveillance that has been uh, bought uh, through this project. The whole area of our county is now uh, on video surveillance and totally covered. Uh, and this is uh, thanks to our uh, county and thanks to our public uh, public society that takes care of natural areas. And now we have introduced some new technologies. Uh, now, of course, we have a lot of uh, training programs uh, that we have implemented. It was uh, a real beginning. For example, this was uh, fire forces uh, training. Uh, our uh, more intensive work has started with uh, children when we joined the Interagitaly Croatia program in order to uh, raise the awareness from the very uh, early age. You see this photos on the slide uh, where we have connected with a video link uh, children from uh, Croatia and Italy. And that was a very uh, emotional moment, an interesting moment uh, to raise the awareness regarding the civil protection. Then we have uh, we have uh, competed with many projects uh, uh, from the area of uh, civil protection, and we would like to thank all uh, the operative uh, units of the civil protection uh, that have supported us in these endeavors. These are some examples of trainings from uh, the uh, implementation of some special projects that have been completed this year. And this is the uh, training of operative units. We are always trying to see what are the needs are of the operative units in the field and then provide the necessary training. Um, that way we can provide and uh, set up a database uh, and uh, see what are the uh, what are the possible activities in which they can be involved at the international level uh, we see that within uh, this um, special special trainings we have been training different units from the uh, civil protection units on the for example at the river of Neretva um, save uh, and rescue activities and uh, what is important to underline is that they have obtained a license that are valid throughout the European Union. So in case of need, uh, if there is an intervention or no help needed, uh, they can use the usual mechanism and uh, our units are available and ready to, ready to help. Uh, what we have insisted on is to insist to, to uh, include the general public, the citizens in uh, many activities in order to obtain uh, a certain level of understanding of our activities, of our work. And this is uh, very important to uh, include actively the citizens. We think about uh, citizens uh, as ourselves. As we see here some photographs in uh, 
which uh, we can see how uh, certain things can be done. Uh, not only the exercise can be seen, but also the video walls that have been installed are uh, enable the public or, and citizens to uh, participate, especially the elderly people uh, who could watch the training and uh, exercise. Uh, and we have used certain equipment uh, on public spaces uh, so that everyone could see and uh, follow these uh, exercises uh, through video calls and then uh, specialists also explained to the public uh, what has been done. What are our expectations from MCR 2030? Uh, we are the only uh, Croatian county that has been included in the initiative uh, uh, it's not uh, a lack, it's a great opportunity and advantage. Uh, our expectations are that we want to expand our activities toward local administration units, which is our main objective. And uh, what I personally think this would be very useful for Croatia because uh, not all uh, areas are equally developed. Therefore, counties should help and can help in order to develop less developed areas. Uh, what you have mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation, uh, the participation in the project uh, is uh, very uh, useful because we can share our experience uh, with uh, others and uh, see what are the others' experience and use them on our territory. And uh, since we are on the border area, we should uh, certainly emphasize that this initiative can be used on the border area, in the cross-border area, uh, and different activities uh, we are on the border with uh, Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, sometimes we need to act uh, jointly despite of protocols and agreements. What is very important in certain cases that we really do have a collaboration and uh, actively uh, and jointly. Uh, be ready in certain circumstances. Of course, uh, the uh, one of the objective is also the uh, strengthening of the links with uh, local administration units, with national bodies, and uh, we as a county are really doing and uh, putting all the effort in doing so. So, uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry for the presentation that uh, didn't work at the very beginning, so we are very adaptable as we are in uh, cases of uh, disasters. Thank you very much, Mato. Uh, this was uh, an excellent uh, example of the role of the county in the risk uh, uh, disaster risk reduction. We have a uh, a lot of towns in uh, Croatia, but very often they are so small, so little that they do not have the capacities, the knowledge and the uh, resources in order to uh, be actively uh, be active in uh, all these initiatives. That's, uh, that's why it's very important to have counties that uh, act uh, as a pool. And uh, for example, Dubrovnik Neretva County is very important because of its uh, geographical position at the border with Montenegro and Bosnia, and there are acts on a cross border level as well. Uh, what you have mentioned regarding the uh, activities with children, it is very important to engage them, to involve them in all the activities in order to raise the aware awareness and uh, uh, think about their future action, about the future risks uh, for them. Now I suggest that we uh, see if there are any questions from our participants. 
trenutačno ništa. A, ako... So in the Q&A there are no questions at the moment. Uh, ok. <laughs> Evo. Ok, Andrew, uh, is it in the... Mazavisa, uh, Andrew, I, I propose... I see Andrew and Zavisa. And then we'll... Uh, we'll read uh, Zavisa's question because it's quite long. <laughs> so go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank Mato and uh, the county for having joined the initiative. Uh, we're delighted to have you on board. And just to reflect again that the network is uh, very open to different forms, sizes of levels uh, of governance uh, uh, at a county or city level. So uh, just wanted to, I wanted to simply confirm what Natasha just said about the possibilities of also engaging uh, the county level, which is great to have you now on board since recently. And we are ho uh, hoping and happy to establish a more systematic conversation on how we can engage and engage through you smaller municipalities that may not have the capacity to necessarily uh, engage in such uh, sort of global networks. So that I think is, is a very good opportunity. And I wanted to echo also the very good experience with youth engagement. Uh, and maybe this is something that we can uh, talk about a little bit more as a follow-up to this workshop. There is a lot of work at a UN level to try and involve groups such as young people in risk reduction and uh, resilience building. And so uh, there are many good practices and you shared one, which I think needs to be promoted. And uh, again, the MCR 2030 network could be an interesting basis for you to use for that. Um, and we'll make sure that our colleagues working on youth engagement are also aware of the work you're doing. Uh, and uh, uh, and we can we can make those connections happen uh, in the context of youth engagement specifically. So uh, it is an op the MCR is also a vehicle to engage in other sectors and other agendas which are equally important and here uh, youth engagement is is one of them so uh, thank you again Mato. it was a very a very rich and interesting presentation and uh You're welcome. To be working with you uh thank you andrew um so we can uh we can see uh, uh zavisha's uh question as well which is also a suggestion and question in in one uh, I'm going to uh, read it and uh, perhaps you can comment after that, uh, Mato. Uh, so have you implemented the analysis of feasibility of the investment and uh, the, the finance uh, analysis in the project in the, of the investment in the project of strengthening operational uh, strengths? And in other words, have you made an analysis how many uh, damages less the county had after the implementation of this project? Yes, we did collect these data. It was difficult uh, to collect all of them, as a lot of it depends on the local and the regional units. Uh, we are working on that, and we have to use certain methods. And in that case, we can see uh, how prepared we were for them and how many lackings we had. So we are working this in cooperation with our county and we are hoping to have those data. I don't know when, but I hope that we will have them. And we will, of course, adapt to the needed deadlines and we will see how we are dealing with the situation at the moment and we can discuss this with the civil protection unit also so what we also have the data for certainly is how much we invested uh, the european funds uh, compared to our own funds and to the funds of the civil protection these are really good and positive differences and also an example can be that, for example, a small municipality, for example, Kula Malinska, where we started working, this, there was also a call center for the operational forces, not only with the firefighters that are their primary user, but also other 
operational units and more than 100,000 euros were invested together with the equipment. So the results are very good. We are working on other uh, areas that are underdeveloped and uh, all the recommendations and proposals are very welcome. And now we can also talk about the general uh, areas of our county. I apologize, but this the, the audio is really bad. Great, and we are happy to see the results. And uh, actually, there are not so many, especially those more concrete ones and uh, detailed data that we receive by investing in reducing uh, disasters risks. But what you showed both is that the more we invest, the more we will have uh, and the more we will uh, obtain and the more we communicate among ourselves uh, between Zagreb and Dubrovnik and the other countries, we will receive more back. So this is um, the start that we want to to share and that we want to raise awareness about uh, because the more finances we request, the more we will receive and we will be able to exchange uh, the opportunities with other cities and we will have other opportunities for new projects. As there are no uh, raised hands or questions. Oh, Andrew? Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, so I would just like to say something. Please, yes, go ahead, Mr. Maestone. I am very grateful to be here at this webinar. I'm sorry, but this is just impossible to interpret. The audio is really bad, Mr. Majstorovic. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. So the city of Zagreb mentioned the crisis. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you, Mr. Majstorovic. Technical problems, then nothing. Sorry. Natasha, so take over. Uh, Unfortunately. Can you hear me? Yes, we're here. We can hear you now. Um, the second we can hear you. Unfortunately, well, thank you. Thanks to Zagreb and Dubrovnik Neretva County and, of course, to the UN. I think that we can conclude that it's very important to exchange opportunities and generally to talk about, um, about disaster risk reduction, especially uh, in the cities where we have these disasters uh, and about with the population that is always struck with us disasters and uh, in MCR 2020, 2030 we can really receive a lot of uh, experiences that can help us on the local le level and we see that we can involve and that we can work on these questions and as we saw in uh, the in the, uh, in the presentations of, uh, of Zagreb and Dubrovnik, uh, we saw what we can do. We also translated the documents that are important for the application, so we will mail them also to the mailing list that was here present to this webinar, and we will also send you a link to uh, participate to the webinar on the 3rd of October about the heat waves and uh, um, and floodings, and we will also send you the presentation that we received from the UN, so we, you can see also the links uh, within the platform. And we can conclude on the examples and uh, the presentations of the UN that there are the tools, but uh, we have to request them and we have to engage more. Do you have some conclusions to make from your side? 
Thank you very much, Natasha. Uh, Mr. Mashatorovich, thank you very much. Sorry, the, li the line was not uh, sufficiently good, but uh, we're very, uh, thank you, Christina. Thank you, Mato. And thank you, uh, Maya Nicoletta for facilitating linguistically the, the whole discussion. Um, and thank you to all participants who were able to join today. We hope that this will trigger an interest from uh, different cities and counties across Croatia to participate in this network. UNDRR, uh, we remain available to help. Uh, it is great to hear that uh, documents are also made available in Croatian for you to facilitate the process. So we hope to, to, to see you all soon on the network and we can explore also how we can do some follow-up conversations of this kind if needed or if useful at a later stage. Uh, but uh, feel free to reach out directly with us at the UN when, uh, whenever you have any questions. And as Natasha said, we will make sure to send all the relevant information to support your follow-up steps in that process. Um, and yes, um, again, delighted to be here. Let's, uh, let's make it happen. Let's make uh, Croatia an important uh, representation in this global network. Uh, and uh, I'm sure together we can manage to do so. So uh, hopefully this, this webinar will be the first step in that direction. Uh, so, um, with, of course, Zagreb and the, the county of Dubrovnik showing the way in, uh, in a very good way. So thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure being with you this morning. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for the for all the help and uh, for uh, um, giving us all the information and for, for the initiative itself. Um, and uh, thank everyone for participating. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.